Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to a Let's Play of Sid Meier's Civilization 4. This video, I don't know, we might only get like three views on this bad boy. Civ 4 is a little dated at this point, not gonna lie. And yet, I often think of this still as one of the greatest versions of Civ ever made. Possibly my personal favorite um, in terms of uh, lots of mechanics and things. It, it, part of it is because this is the first version of Civ I really dove deeply into in terms of strategy. Also, this was the very first Let's Play I ever did on my channel. I'd done some content before for World of Warcraft and League of Legends uh, back when it was a little tiny alpha early access game that no one had really heard of. Um, and then one day those servers were down. And so I decided to do one of those Let's Play things I heard about, and it was indeed for Civ 4. So we're gonna go ahead and jump in here. One of the sad things is the uh, the Civ 4 music uh, does get super duper flagged on YouTube because it was from an earlier era and the rights weren't set up the same way. So I've got some little classical music that I'm gonna be playing in the background instead that uh, is supposed to be YouTube safe. So fingers crossed for that. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go single player. We'll go the custom game setup. Um, I'm going to leave everything on random difficulty. Yeah, I think I'm going to be wimpy and only go Monarch. Whereas in Civ 5 and Civ 6, we routinely beat the game on Deity. And I've always said I have no right to win the game on such a high difficulty. But because of the one unit per tile mechanics and the fact that, you know, in general, computer AI is only ever going to be so good at that kind of tactical combat. It makes it a lot easier for us to catch up in those games. Not so much the case in Civ 4, and I'm kind of out of practice. So I think I might just go Monarch here and cross my fingers that it's not going to be an exceptionally difficult game. Should I try Emperor? I don't know. I'm really, I'm really going to be rusty. I'm really going to be rusty. I'm just going to go Monarch. Call me a wimp if you want, that's gonna be fine. Uh, I'll play in continents map, I do like that. We'll play standard size. A lot of times the uh, the slower speeds are quite nice. Um, I think it's less... So generally speaking, slower speeds benefit the players because there's more opportunity for you to find those edge improvements over the AI. And it's, as I think, especially true in Civ 5 and Civ 6 because it means, because technology and building is slower, it means you effectively get more turns to move your units around. And that's where the human player can do a lot of catch up. Uh, so that's less of an issue in Civ 4 because of course you've got stacks of units instead of one unit per tile, but it's still kind of true. I'm gonna go normal here because I have pretty full schedule this month and I'm just sneaking in this game for myself personally. So I think I'll leave that in there. These settings are all gonna be fine on the standard. Yeah, all right, let's lunch and see who we get. Now, the actual characters we get is a little less significant than in 5 and 6 because the uniqueness of each civilization is certainly not as extensive. So it's less of an issue. We are playing as the English Empire here as Churchill. Our starting technologies will be fishing and mining. Uh, so these don't really lend themselves to an early religious push, but we'll see how it goes. Our unique unit is the red coat to replace the rifleman, so we won't see that for a while. And the stock exchange replaced the bank again. A little bit sort of uh, mid to late game-ish on those, um, which generally speaking, I think are less impactful. A lot of times it's the sibs with something very early on that I feel has a bigger snowball. In terms of our traits, we've got charismatic and protective. Now we're gonna go ahead into the Civilopedia over here and we're gonna look at leaders, Charlie, there we go, uh, Charlie, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Charlie, I don't know, Winnie, Winnie over here. So Charismatic gives us an extra happy face for city, which is actually quite nice. And we need less XP for unit promotions. We also get extra happiness from monuments and broadcast towers. Monuments we do get very early. So between these two, two extra um, happiness early on does make it a lot easier to grow your cities a lot bigger. It may decrease the valuation of um, the slavery civic because slavery civic is most useful when your city's capped at very small sizes and because of happiness cap. And since you can't grow them, you may as well sacrifice pop to rush buildings. So that might be a little less here. That'll be interesting to see how we weight that in. Uh, and then the other trait we've got is protective. Neither one of these traits I think are terribly strong. Like financial is the one I usually like the best. And I think spiritual has a lot of value with giving you flexibility for changing your civics and saving you some anarchy times, but we'll see what we can do with this. All right, let's take a look at our start. And oh, as a reminder, uh, I am using the better or the bug. I think I'm using just the bug mod, not the better bug mod in this case. Um, the bug is better unaltered gameplay. It's just a UI mod that adds some extra buttons and some extra info on the screen, which is really useful. Uh, you can also get the better bug version, which includes the better AI mod. I don't think I'm running it in here. So in our starting location, so our settlers over here 
We are going to have corn within our initial radius, which is kind of nice. At your service. Tell me what and then uh, cows within our fat cross pretty quickly, which will happen with our capital. Do we want to move yes. their starter? I mean, we could go ahead and sacrifice one turn to settle on the coast. The thing is, our current position is pretty good. We will have access to fresh water. The fat crosses all workable yes. tiles. Let me move this warrior maybe... Maybe I should go up the coast. Okay, I don't see any sea resources or anything like that. Um, I really don't think there's a lot of value to moving. I think I really like our starting spot. So I'm going to go ahead and settle in place. And we'll found London. And then that also popped the goodie hut. One of the nice things about popping the goodie hut with the borders from your cities is it's uh, guaranteed to not be one of the bad results. On the other hand, I think because the goodie hut pops, there's like a weird order. I don't know if you can get a free tech or, or you can't get a plus one pop population, I think, from uh, from taking that. So I think there's some pros and cons to whether or not you let goody huts get popped by your city borders. Um, I think it's less relevant if it was just outside the borders of the city, then it's actually really good to just let the border expansion take it. But this one here, I think we're limited in what kind of results we can get. The best, I think, would have probably been plus one pop. But the goal is fine. It'll let us run a deficit expense later on. So that's going to be OK. And in terms of building here, our tech we start with is fishing and mining. We don't start with agriculture. I don't think we're going to go with a worker immediately. We're going to want it pretty quick to improve tiles. But in Civ 4, your city doesn't grow when you're building uh, workers or settlers. On the other hand, excess food does carry over to production when you're building workers and settlers. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. But I think some growth here is going to be good. I think what we'll probably do is start with a warrior here. And it's possible we'll let the warrior finish, or it's possible we'll do when we grow in eight turns, we might switch to a worker at that point, because we'll be working a couple of tiles. Um, I mean, they're not very strong, but I guess it'll probably have to do. Uh, what we should do as well is we should turn on emphasize production. What's going to happen with this? When our city grows, it'll try to put the new pop on an extra production tile. And this is a trick that works in Civ 4, 5, and 6, because what happens is the food gets processed first, so your city grows, and then the pop with the production will get uh, processed. So ideally you want the new pop to show up and work a maximum productive tile. So you get that benefit right away. But then you'll likely want to go and manually um, lock your population on high food tiles because growth is so important. So we kind of want citizen management turned off, which is currently is. So it's just manually assigning to this. New population will get assigned from this rules, maybe work here, and then afterwards we'll probably want to move to a more food tile. Um, that it'll it'll work the best production tile that it can while still producing enough food to not starve the city. So it may or may not work. This, uh, in theory, you could do this the entire game for all your cities, and again, Civ four, five, and six. The problem is that it's, it's a fair little bit of micro, and then if you like forget it, forget to check your population, um, and then all of a sudden you're not working enough food it's worse so if you think you're gonna forget like i probably will it's not necessarily worth doing but I'll, I'll try to run it for a few turns okay let's talk technology here we're not in line to get one of the early religions because we don't start with mysticism so grabbing meditation for buddhism or polytheism for hinduism is not really in the cards uh if we did want to found a religion we could probably beeline monotheism here found judaism um we can usually do that without too much conflict um, on the other hand, if one of our neighbors founds a religion, we're going to be perfectly happy with letting them spread to us. Uh, I, having Founding the religion means we get a holy city, which is worth a lot of money. But um, a failed hunt might be a little annoying. On the other hand, if we do go down the, the spiritual text, uh, it would be very nice to do the Oracle slingshot. So the Oracle is a world wonder. When you finish it, you get a free technology. And usually the best thing to do with it is to... Um, have writing research because from priesthood you can get all the way to code of laws if you also have writing it's got a second prereq so it needs priesthood and writing um and so what you can do is research priesthood start working on the oracle then research writing finish it before the oracle finishes oracle finishes you pick up code of laws which lets you found confucianism gives you access to courthouses which is really good and the potentially caste system if you're going to run a specialist economy which is something we could consider for ourselves and that's a really powerful move but I think short term, what we need to look at is unlocking technologies that will let us improve our resources. So I think the smart thing to do is probably go agriculture so we can farm. And then I'll queue up animal husbandry, I think, which will let us pasture on the cows. Also reveal horses, which might be useful. I think that's the play because we're going to want to improve our tiles. So and then we'll see. We might still consider doing Oracle slingshotty things. Or if we consider maybe doing a specialist economy, while cast system is still useful for that, just running up to literature for the great library can help us pump out some great scientists, which is kind of nice. 
So we've got a few interesting possibilities. The sound is on in the game, isn't it? Uh, yeah, the game's not muted. Maybe my own sound is quite low. Your orders. Oh yeah, okay, you're making noise. All right, I had my speakers set a little low. We got some desert over there. London size is going in five. We'll keep looking at the coast. And yeah, we start with fishing, but not really anything to work with the fish. We got some marble up here, which could certainly let us build some uh, wonders. Okay, London's borders just grew. Well, instead of this, and this, this is the problem with not having automated um, workers, because this is clearly a better tile. Now, if I turn on citizen automation, it will work that. So it seems fine right now. It'd be nice to have automated, but also lock a tile. But that's not really his feature here. Okay. I'll probably um, go full automation after it grows one time, because, yeah, I'm going to forget at some point, and it's just going to make the game so much worse. Let's come back down there. As usual, I kind of want to explore in kind of a circle around my capital, find good uh, spots, rather than just, you know, beelining in one direction. All right, you've grown to size two. Yeah, you're still prioritizing this for the food, so this little um, autumn, uh, emphasis didn't really do anything. I'm probably gonna turn this off now so I don't actually have to worry about uh, forgetting it. So, I'm gonna warrior seven turns. We could actually just let grow, or London grow to six, pop out this warrior, and then get the worker at that point. Yeah, all right. I think that might be okay. Oh, Suri, how's it going? I can't really discuss anything right now. Oh, farmers, pray that your summers be wet and your winters clear. No Cini Beanie in this game. Instead, we got Spook the Vulcan reading our quotes. Well, mostly. All, some of them from the expansion are read by uh, Sid Meier's. Um, but uh, yeah, mostly mostly it's Leonard Des Moines. All right, so mill the farm. And we are working our way to animal husbandry as well. Buddhism has been founded in distant land. Check. Okay, it's been a turn. At least I think we just went to turn. Let's check again. Okay, Khmer is not Buddhist, so they did not found it. Again, pros are cut. We do want to make sure we get a religion. If none of our neighbors found a religion, that's terrible. In Civ 4, early on, rather than getting barbarians, you get these wild animals. Wild animals do not enter your borders, but they will otherwise try to eat your units. Um, we could fortify here, which wouldn't be too bad. Lines up a strength of two. We have a strength of two. We got the defense bonus from being in the woods of plus 50%. So um, we should win. And in fact, I think you're guaranteed to win your first battle against barbarians, um, including the animals. I think I will just fortify here, which should give us an extra bonus. Okay, I'm going to wake you up and then we'll go ahead and do the fortify until healed. So we do get, uh, you know, we do get some XP and things for this, but mostly it was about trying to limit the number of runners around. Okay, London grows. We're going to let it continue working on the warriors one more turn here. What tiles uh, did you start working? Yeah, you're working that, which is nice for the commerce, which currently is converting to more science. I guess we're going to hit the warrior in one turn anyway, although we could work one of these tiles for a little more overflow. <sighs> you know, I'm not upset. Done. Okay, now we definitely got a, a, want a worker. I do want to start on settlers pretty early, but we want the tiles that are being worked currently to be improved as much as possible. Um, so now some of the uh, the tiles might move around here because I think I think the AI was waiting this tile because it didn't need it for the production. Now it's putting it over there to get the worker a little faster, which is great. And you're gonna come down here, pop some vision. Well, let's get this goody hut. Oh, we got experience. Okay, well. Not the greatest, not the worst. I think I'm going to go up the generic um, uh, combat strength promotion here. We've got enough XP because it's 2 XP for the first level, 5 XP for the second. So we have an XP for the second one. So if I do this, we can then get shock, which is a bonus versus melee units, which is going to be a big deal early on. Um, promoting units does heal you a little bit as well. Hinduism has been founded. No, not Khmer. I don't think Khmer started with, um, with meditation or mysticism. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking it, it, it's possible that they tried and failed to get both religions. So I want to make sure to not end up on flat land next to um next to that lion, if at all possible, because we'll be extra vulnerable there. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Okay. 
We've got that. We are going to go for bronze working next, partially because it will reveal copper. It also lets us chop down force for production boost. Um, and it does unlock Axeman, assuming we have copper or iron. But the big thing about it is that it does enact the slavery civic, which is insanely powerful early on. And we definitely want to uh, want to use that, despite the happy boost that we're getting from being a uh, Winnie Churchill there. Okay, let's see jungle down here. Go coast and come around. We did discover horses. Wow, we've got horses by London. Huh. <clears throat> okay. Bananas. Hello, Korea. You also don't have a religion. Hmm. Okay. Worker is done. So we're going to start on a settler now. And we're going to go and farm this. It's going to take five turns for the build the farm. Of course, we don't have charges on our workers in this game. Uh, they can last for the entirety of the game, but it does actually have take time to build these improvements. That. You're still slightly damaged, but you're fairly promoted, so I think you're fine. There's a dark spot west here, which is not ideal. Okay, let's send you over there. Uh, do I actually know where any of my neighbors are? No, I do not. Although I feel like maybe the Khmer to our south. I'm thinking we're going to settle this spot first here. Alright, yeah, so we're 14. You're still working on that. All good. Improving the food production over here is going to be nice because that does translate to more production towards our settler. Buddhism's been founded. Okay, so that's all three of the early religions. Really? Mm. I don't know if we're building in the right order for an Oracle slingshot. Although if we do get this marble, Oracle is a marble wonder, right? Yeah, double production speed with marble, um, as is the Great Library, which is quite nice early on. So we might find ourselves being able to do that and force Taoism and then spread that around our continent. So we can have a shared religion and, you know, be a little bit more friendly. Let me cross over here and I'm just going to fog bus. Barbarian units can't spawn where you have vision. So we'll stand here, which is also, I think, where we're going to send our first settler. I mean, I know there's marble in the north, but that city to the south of us is uh, very nice. There's it copper here, too. Jeez! For a young man killed in battle to lie mangled by the bronze spear. In his death, all things appear fair. All right, so we've unlocked the Slavery Civic, which allows us to sacrifice population to finish production in the city. We're going to want to go to that right away. It is going to cost us one turn of revolution, which means nothing's going to get produced or research anything for that time, but I think it's going to be worthwhile. Um, it's a lot to work up there, but it might be okay. I think we probably have to get writing first. But often what I like to do is research writing while I'm building the Oracle. But in this case, I think we probably need to get this library to boost our science to try to burn through this quickly enough to hopefully get it unlocked. Um, we're going to go for pottery. Like, we're, it's going to be the long way. Grab pottery, which we'll want for the granary. Building cottage is nice. We also get our roads. Unlock that. And then go for priesthood. The cheaper way is through meditation. It's a little less expensive than polytheism. Um, but polytheism is needed for literature and we can backfill the others. So I think we're going to do something kind of like this. And otherwise, I think just position yourself over here to do a little fog busting. So that's been improved there, which is great. I'd prefer getting the corn, but it's a little further away. So I'll probably just do the horses uh, while I'm nearby. Okay, there we go. All right, so India definitely starts with um, mysticism as an opening tech. They're in a good position to get a tech. Um, and they founded Judaism. They actually, it's possible they founded more than one religion, although I don't see why they would have swapped away from uh, Buddhism or Hinduism if it had already been established. So most likely, um, I'm betting the other two religions on another continent. Now, if those were founded by two separate nations, that's going to be good because they'll have some religious animosity. Whereas on our continent, if we can all be friends, assuming I get enough, enough cities plopped down, that actually could work out very well for a bit of a peaceful run. We could consider going science, or if we build enough wonders, maybe tourism. So slavery is a 
go and actually I could hurry the settler but it's not about to finish I think we'll let it finish naturally um I kind of want I'm gonna build I think the warrior here timing's a little awkward but we can let this grow to size four and then it's gonna be some more settler spam so we start dot mapping I think so so I can use alt X here to just plop down some dots to mark my city locations now, again, as per, you know, Civ 5 and Civ 6, some overlap is fine. Because it only matters when a city reaches absolute maximum population. Things, it feels like this is an obvious location here. Um, unlike in, say, Civ 6, where you can be a tile off and then still build your harbor and then still have sea access. If you're going to have sea tiles, you really want to be on the coast for Civ 4 because it enables you to build a lighthouse, which is very important, and then for also ships. So it feels like we probably settle here as kind of a no-brainer move. In which case, now fresh water is good for the bonus health. That's a lot of overlap. I think I probably do this, and then I suspect the city goes down probably somewhere over there later on. And that's looking kind of okay. Now, we do have a blank spot there. Desert tiles. Ooh, if we want to get this marble. If we want to get this marble, maybe the thing to do is to build somewhere over here. I should send us a, a scout-type unit to get a little bit more vision over here and consider the plan. But yeah, I don't know for sure. And then over this way... This might not be bad. So this will be a Plains Hill, so we'll get the extra production and center tile, which doesn't matter as much as the cities keep going forward. A hill location is nice and defensive as well, although this is going to be a hill that my enemies can stand on and also fight, which is maybe unfortunate, but it does look like it picks up a lot of decent stuff. So anyway, that's going to be the early settlement plan. It might change as, you know, Barbarian City spawn or the AI comes and settles here or something like that, or if we spot different resources. But at least we have a general idea that's not too terrible. Although, I would like the marble, and unfortunately, that is looking pretty rough. I think I'm going to go for the settle here first, though, because this seems this seems really strong. So we're going to do that. <clears throat> uh, I still want to get London to grow a tiny bit more. So, and of course, if I build a worker, although I might like another worker, it won't grow. So we'll just get the other warrior. You're going to come over there for fog busting and also just general scouting duties. We'll get you to work this corn because that's going to matter once London grows to size four because we'll want to work for improved tiles if we can. And yeah, you could sack a pop here, but I'll let you grow and then we'll do it. Although I'm saying, you know, slavery is so powerful and we're not really using it right now, but we're going to use it to, um, to accelerate the settler. All right, we got York over here. I think we're going to start on the worker immediately. We do need some extra workers happening. It's going to be important. Please go and farm the corn. Your size four. Do I finish the worker? No, you know what? I think I go and start the settler right away. So I'm going to put it at the top of the queue. And yeah, I've, in a couple of turns, probably we can go and whip for rush. Put your shoulder to the wheel. Okay, so some people hate each other. I don't think there's any deals I can do with anything. I mean, unless they've researched now. So there's no, there's no deals. We don't have, um, we can't make open borders, which we need writing for. Um, we'll go into the forest. You do get a defensive bonus on the hills as well, but the forest is pretty good. London can hurt. Oh, we got an event. Industrious villagers in the city of York has built a pasture. Free pasture? That's a great random event. And yeah, so we're going to sack two pops here to grow the settlers. We'll bounce the city back very quickly because small sized cities grow back very quickly. It'll be especially true once we get ourselves a granary. There's a lot of tundra tiles over there. How important is the fresh water bonus? Maybe we settle... I mean, we could do this and get the marble, and at least it works the cow. It's got a bunch of desert tiles, which isn't great. We could go here, which would get some decent tiles to start off with. Maybe a little weaker later in the game, unless we build a series of farms to bring irrigation down over here. This might be good. The inner circle that it's going to work immediately before it gets a border expansion does get two good resources. While this city's small pop, it's actually not going to be... It's not going to be a bad spot. That might be the stronger move. It's also closer to the capital, which makes it a little easier for us to, you know, defend and respond to things. Even the AI is like, well, maybe you want to settle over here. And I mean, this... Well, no, we don't, we don't want there because it won't eventually grow to the... Uh, to the marble. Let's pull back over here. And actually, even you, I'm going to wake up and just keep an eye 
do some um, escorting. Let this warrior finish. And I do want the city to grow. We could put a few turns into the barracks. But a few more warriors, not a bad idea. Again, we want a fog bust. We might want to keep an eye on the spots where I'm looking to settle. You can move over that way. That's been improved. We do need roads to make sure to bring the resources into the city. Not that we need it immediately. You're working on your worker. I think what we'll do is we'll send you up this way. And we'll get you ready to work on the wheat. Go back a sec here to give vision for that worker. Yeah, you can park yourself there actually for decent vision. Go. We might have enough warriors for vision. I mean, they don't fight great. They always are good for fog busting. They're always good for um, policing duties as well. Because so I just want to work on something for one turn to let them grow. Although we might we might do two. Well, pottery finishes in two turns. We're going to want to start building a granary in London immediately. So, you know what? We'll start the barracks. That's going to be fine. Move you down in this direction. You're all good over here. Let's move you over there. Okay. Yeah, you build here. Nottingham. Um, start your worker right away. That's fine. I mean, I guess we sent a worker over there as well, but no, that's okay. Hath not the potter power over the clay to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? So the great thing here is granary. It stores 50% of the food after growth because normally the food meter resets. What I'm going to do for all three of my cities here, I'm just going to select them. I'm going to control click the granary to put them at the top of the queue because it's going to be super valuable to have that. Um, you can build a farm there, please and thank you. Yeah, London will grow to size four. And I was going to say we should be able to rush some things, which we're going to want to do. Okay, good. Um, I will give you just the combat promotion and then go ahead and rest. That's going to be all right. Largest civilization in the world is us. Really? Okay, barbarian archers are kind of scary because they're strength three and they get a first strike. <sighs> I was sort of hoping to stop them from spawning. Now, they don't actually have a ranged attack like they do in Civ uh, 6 or whatever. Um, everything is effectively this, just straight up melee, the way it works in this game. Um, if we're defending in the woods, we're probably going to be okay, but we are going to have to keep that in mind for things. Well, there we go. That's So that's the Indian Empire over there. Good. We defended here. We did have the Combat 1 promotion, which is nice. Yeah, no, nothing. Okay. And yeah, come here. We have only 60% of their strength, which is what's being shown down here. A lot of beavers up north. Oh, there's some uh, some chopping available. Although, is it in London again? I guess it would be. They're in the place to populate. Oh, no. Yeah, it is London. Um, plus 19 turns. Oh, well, you're back to working on the barracks. Um, what you're gonna need is actually a defensive warrior. But you know what? Throw a worker on there. That's what I want. Okay. Oh, no, right, we don't have open borders agreements, but borders are still respected early in the game here. Okay, Korean Empire. Hurry the worker, that's fine. Okay, we've got the road there, which will be important later. We're gonna go hook this up. You're already population two, so you wanna work it. We do need some border growth going on here. I guess if we should, hmm. So we're gonna want the monuments for some cultural pressure because right now our cities can't grow. Well, they can build libraries for it as well. We do get plus one happy from the monuments, so we're clearly going to want to build them, but we don't need them immediately. <clears throat> Writing's nearly done. May as well finish the barracks and the growth over here. That seems okay. Um, we are gonna want to get some roads connecting our various things. We'll, we'll move you and collect the copper. We need some more, um, some more settlers as well. Oh, York. Boost the granary. 
Uh, you're pr you're very unhappy, London. We might have to let you catch up. Although I think we're gonna have to do also some whippings because you're gonna become actually unhappy. We'll have to drop their size. True glory consists. Okay, we can do open borders now. Deserves to be written in writing what deserves to be read. And yeah, we're gonna go on for our library quite early. So yeah, London didn't actually become unhappy, although. Uh, it's going to be six turns before we lose one of those. You don't have a defensive unit, so that's part of it. You can get one extra happy just by putting a military unit in there. All right, let's sign all our open borders if you're willing to do it. Good. Because that will help to improve our relationships with one another. Although some of these might be unhappy that I traded with their worst enemy. They might come knocking and ask me to stop trading with someone. And I might say yes to build up someone. Again, it would be a lot easier if India were to go and spread its um, its Judaism around, and then we'd all be real friendly. Actually, workboat is great. So a workboat does improve the sea resources, does get consumed, unlike the worker, although it doesn't freeze our population growth. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll improve the uh, fish. It's going to be really good. Fog blasting over here might be nice. Well, I might want to go and keep an eye on the spot right here where I'm going to want to settle because I think we, we are going to want to settle that. We As long as the, the copper is improved within our borders, we will get the benefit from it. But it's this is going to be a great spot for a city and we certainly don't want to lose it to the AI. As you wish. All right, I'm going to pull you back. Cattle is done. Um, I can't improve this right now. I think we'll probably start working on the, the road connection. So we'll build a road here so it's the, the cattle has it. And then we're going to just snake a road down here connected to the capital. It'll open up trade routes, which will be useful for extra income. Let's farm the rice. Um, and... It'll also let us share our resources. I think I've got to go and sit on this tile here. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to declare to stop the AI from settling, but you know, sacrifice two pops. You're unhappy anyway. You know what? It's fine. The beatings will continue until morale improves, right? Yeah, just sit here. Keep an eye on things. We're just going to keep exploring with you. Oh, the Oracle's been built. Oh, wow. Okay. So... I think our best bet is to try to go for the Great Library here. So we still have to research polytheism. Unless I can just start... Do I just pick up Alphabet and see if I can start trading with my neighbors as a bit of a catch-up? Being the first to Alphabet is quite nice. We'll finish Mysticism one turn, one turn away anyway. We'll do this and see if we can use this to catch up over here so I don't have to research polytheism. We'll research Alphabet, then we'll go to Aesthetics and hopefully, yeah, trade for polytheism so that we can then research literature after that. Ooh. This is actually Nature not a great spot for us. Has imprinted on the minds of all the idea of God. We don't have stone, so we don't get double protection from Stonehenge. It does give us the free monument everywhere, which is nice. And I didn't, don't think I saw a message about it getting built, although it's not in the list here, so it must have gone. Um, building monument would give us happy here. I mean, also getting a defensive unit, although we've got one coming this way. Do I just start in the settler? I think I just start in the settler here. We've got to get our settler spam going on. Uh, we are running a deficit here, so this what's about to happen uh, is our slider here is going to move away from technology, so it will slow down the alphabet boost. Actually, um, yeah, get the settler. I do have to run some science specialists because I really want to get a great scientist to pop. As you wish. And we should do some chopping soon too. The archer won't be able to shoot me if I move here right now, because it's only got a movement of one. Fortify up over here. Hurry things. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, that's done. Uh, library also gives us happy. Right now, it wouldn't do much for us. The monument is super cheap. Sorry, library gives us culture, not happiness. But uh, let's get the monument going, because we do benefit fairly well from that. Fishing boat's hooked up, which works instantly, which is nice. Get up on the hill. And 
I mean, we're gonna have a road connection over there, but we'll do this. Maybe we'll do a diagonal wiggle waggle for things. Boom, we do wanna let London grow at least one more. Um, I'll put a turn into a monument. I'm not going to attack you, but I'm not going to be worried about standing near you. Although I don't, don't really need to go down this way, so maybe I will wait on that after all. Oh, India, I'm good friends with you. Interesting. That happened quick. Just the plus one. Okay, yeah, India or Asaka specifically doesn't have a huge threshold, I suppose, for friendliness. Okay, monument is up. Um, we, we go library here. Settle there, so that is going to add more to our maintenance. Go granary immediately, that's going to be fine. You move over there. Let me pop back down here. This unit will actually need? put you in Hastings. Um, no, I'm going to... You're already unhappy. Didn't I... Wasn't I sending a military unit back to you? Tell me what to do. Maybe not. Let me throw that in there. I guess it was probably one of these, and I was like, no, I still need to do Fog Bust. All right, you're connected up, so we are starting to get some trade, which will maybe help the economy a little bit. Um, I'm going to go and farm this tile here, because we're going to need some extra food going on in Hastings. Move on up. And, I mean, no reason to farm this tile yet. London, not going to take advantage of it. Um, can we do some chops? With nothing else, I'll probably want to go and chop these hill locations. We don't have math, so we're not getting the benefit from it. Like, we're not getting the increased output, but it might still be valuable. Okay, you've done that. Get started on your monument. And... You can start cottaging. I mean, I guess there's we're going to use cottages on those tiles. Oh, or what I could do is I could have gone and chopped these hills. Maybe I still will. Meanwhile, you've connected the roads. So we got the trade going on there. Plant a mine, which will also remove the forest. Same thing here. And we can start building Axemen, which is great. Build me another settler. Because I want to plop it down here. That's gonna kill our economy, but we've got um we've got some um some libraries going so we can run science specialists, even if we're having to divert all of our commerce over to money and not science. Fortify in there, which will keep you happy. Start in the barracks. We'll probably want a few everywhere, and we're going to want to spam some units out at some point. We're going to want to catch us up militaristically here. When we can. I'm going to hurry that barracks. Um, in London, I'm not going to do this, because as soon as this settler finishes, I'm going to want to run um, two scientists. In fact, it hurts my heart that we haven't started already, but I think realistically it does have to wait a wee bit. Dun dun dun. Your border, you've got your monuments, so your border should be expanding, so what we're going to do is we're going to get our road building out to the marble. And remove our dot mapping from these spots over here just to declutter the screen. Okay. Barracks done. I'm going to get you to start mailing a few axemen. Just because I'm a little worried about barbarian things. Oh, we don't have the ability to chop uh, jungle yet. We don't have iron working. I'm not sure. Well, York supplies five and it needs to work some more improved tiles. Okay. All right. Oh, I just noticed the time. I got to go and put a cut in here. Folks, if you're as excited as I am to play some more Civ 4, one of my favorite games of all time, well, make sure to subscribe, make sure to follow. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.